Hello network students. Welcome to week two of quiz sections. Uh, so today we have with us Will Scott. Will is a graduate student at the University of Washington and he is a former employee at Google and he's an expert on all things to do with Google. Uh, so today we are going to talk about some tweaks and some optimization that Google does to the regular network protocol stack and Will is going to tell us about that. So Will, why don't we start with why are these tweaks required? Uh, TCP is a 20 year old protocol. So isn't TCP IP a solved problem? Yeah, so let me uh, prefix my answer by saying that I didn't work on Google's TCP stack, um, but rather worked on some of their actual products. But um, I mean, when you think about TCP, TCP is a very broad protocol that is responsible for most of the traffic that goes across the internet. Uh, but traffic that is going on inside of a data center is going to look very different from the traffic that goes between your home computer and that data center. Right? The, the computers are much closer together in that packets are going to get to their destination much faster, like a matter of milliseconds uh, or one millisecond, something like that. Um, and also that there's a lot of bandwidth between those. Right? Um, data centers are going to have a gigabit connection between any two computers. It's going to be fast. Uh, that's like at minimum. Um, and so one thing that you're going to see is that in TCP, we've got this slow start mechanism, uh, which sort of probes the connection, sees how much bandwidth is available. And that's something that you need on the internet, because you, you don't know how much bandwidth you've got. Uh, but in a data center, you've got much more of that guarantee of, of what your connection looks like. And so you can, you can set your parameters so that you largely skip that. Right? You start with a large window to, to send so that for most of your connections, uh, they're going to send before you need to wait for any uh, of your acknowledgments to come back to you. And so that lets you be more efficient. Uh, and that happens because you have a better sense of what traffic you're going to be sending. Um, all right, so can you tell us about Anycast? What is Anycast? And how does it work? And how does it help us? Sure. So Anycast is a way where you can have multiple hosts that all respond to the same IP address. Uh, so if you've got a piece of content, um, or a service, like for instance Google, but uh, you can think of any piece of content. And you want hosts around the world to be able to get to that content quickly. One of the problems that we have with the model that we understand so far is that all of the hosts are going to have, all of the computers around the world are going to have to go to one place to get that content, right? The IP address identifies one machine. Um, and that's sort of suboptimal in that you don't really want the computers in Europe to have to go to the US to get their content if you've got data centers in Europe. Um, and so you're, there's a trick that gets played, and it's called Anycast. And what, that, what Anycast allows computers and services to do is that they can advertise the same IP address from multiple places. Um, so the BGP protocol, the Border Gateway Protocol, uh, which I believe has been discussed in your lectures, um, talks about how an AS, uh, an autonomous system, is going to advertise uh, a block of IP addresses that it owns. And so Google can, from multiple uh, places where it peers with other autonomous systems, it can advertise that it owns and has a route to um, the same block of IP addresses. And so when, when your host goes to, um, goes to send packets to that IP address, it'll, it'll follow the path to the closest Google data center. And so it will end up, end up following that shorter path. Uh, and Anycast gets used in a lot of places, it gets used uh, by the, the root DNS servers and by many sort of replicated, widely available services. Uh, it, it's, it's a common trick that gets played uh, to allow for this locality uh, in global internet services. Um, thank you, Will. Uh, so before, before we talk about geosensitive DNS and what Google does with it, um, can you give our students a, a very brief primer on what DNS is? Because we haven't studied the application layer yet. Sure. So DNS stands for the domain name system. Uh, and it's the internet system that lets you resolve a domain name to an IP address. Uh, so the google.com or the washington.edu or the coursera.org name that we type into our browser uh, and get used in many applications, uh, when you think about the internet packet and the, the IP header that you've learned, there's no place for that to fit. right? The, the destination is one of these IP addresses, like 128.208.4.252 or something like that. Um, and so the DNS system is uh, a set of servers. Uh, they form sort of a tree. And, and the thought is it's a way to, to resolve one of those names, like washington.edu, back to an IP address uh, that you can route to. So what does Google do differently from 
the DNS you just described. Okay. So one thing that you'll notice with uh, with Google, if you uh, if you look up their record, is that they tend to set the time to live field very short, uh, like something like five minutes, uh, or even one minute. And what that what that does is it says it tells sort of intermediate DNS servers that they shouldn't cache the result very long. That Google's IP addresses are very volatile, uh, that they'll change quickly. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that when you ask for Google, you'll get something like ten IP addresses, ten IP addresses back, not just one. Uh, which gives your uh, computer some additional freedom in load balancing. Um, but I think, the, I think the caching is sort of one of the interesting points. Uh, DNS ends up caching a lot. There's a lot of sort of intermediation between Google's DNS server and you. Uh, your ISP, uh, your local network tend to cache. Uh, and so Google doesn't, it isn't able to directly say, you should visit this IP address when you want to visit us. Uh, and that, that ends up making their traffic management issues tricky because there's these intermediate systems that they can't control uh, in between the clients and them. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you see from them uh, to try and prevent this is uh, something, the use of C names uh, to alias their domain names. And so what they'll do sometimes is that a, a domain that tends to have logged in users uh, will actually be an alias for some longer, uh, more personal uh, domain. And what that does is it means that your client will sort of save that and in the future it'll look up that specific domain and that lets the DNS server route you to the data center that has your data uh, so that it, they don't have to, to move it around uh, to a different data center if, you're, if your traffic comes up there. So it seems like the gist of these optimizations that we saw was that in today's internet the content is more important than finding the content, it's more important than finding the right host. So. If suppose in a hypothetical scenario, if the internet were to be redesigned and built up from the bottom up today, what do you think would be different? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and a lot of thought went into the internet, uh, and and we've come up with something that's really cool. Uh, I mean, I think I think one thing that we've noticed, right, is the internet was purposely designed with all of the functionality pushed out to the edges, and that's given us a set of properties. Uh, we have really good evolvability. We can evolve protocols without having to change the intermediate, you know, the core routers. Uh, and we also get good properties of uh, reliability and availability. Uh, but there's other things that, that end up not working as well in that model. Uh, things like quality of service. So that's when, if you want to, to watch a video and you want to sort of pre-set up that channel and say, I really want to make sure that the video keeps coming at the same rate the whole time and guarantee that. Uh, or mobility, if you want to be able to move your laptop to different points in the network and have the connections not lose. Um, the internet isn't set up to handle that very well right now. Um, so I guess to, to answer your question, um, I think we're at a point in the internet now where maybe we have a better sense uh, of, of what it's, it's doing now uh, and are happy with that. And so that means maybe we can start pushing some of the functionality back into the middle. I think we're seeing that already with middle boxes. Uh, we've got this proliferation, proliferation of smart uh, machines in the middle of the internet. Um, I think in a ground up uh, design, you'd probably see this as well. Also because we've got a lot of big company players uh, and that definitely makes their life easier if they have more intelligence there. Um. Right. Thanks a lot. And thank you for listening to the quiz section. And goodbye. Thanks. <laughs>